Could I ask you, Dave, when did you get this religion? I mean, when you came to join Ronald Reagan as a budget director, uh, after a storied career as a very young, up-and-coming congressman, um, when did you just say, wait a minute, this isn't adding up? Well, when the numbers started uh, not to add up. <laughs> and when you presented uh, that to Ronald Reagan, what did he say? Well, I mean, I've, I laid that out in my first book. He just didn't want to believe it. And he thought quickly it would get better when the recovery came. The recovery came. The deficit was still $200 billion. But the then boom he, more than offset the concerns about the deficit, no, right? No, didn't. I mean, well, that was the it, argument. Yeah, that was the argument at the time. But it led to the very terrible legacy that deficits don't matter. Uh, Cheney actually said it uh, uh, explicitly. Explicitly. The Republican rank and file adopted it. I don't know if they really believed it, but it was convenient. Well, what's worse, to build deficits based on tax cuts, if that's your argument, or excessive spending? To, there is no way uh, that a deficit... There is no good red, right? No, there is no uh, way that a deficit doesn't become a tax increase sometime down the road. We are burying the next generation in debt. They will have we're to We're burying it with them. only a select few. We're taxing more. And half the people pay no federal income tax at all. Of course they do So don't. isn't that disproportionate? Well, look, at the whole system is out of kilter. And as we get down the road and finally the day of reckoning comes and we have to begin to manage this debt, which is totally out of control, we're going to be taxing everybody. Well, when will it happen? The, when do you think that happens? I think we're getting close to the point where the Fed can no longer buy the all the debt. next couple of years? Yes. I think the bond market... So the end of the Obama term would look like what? Uh, like, uh, you know, some major dislocation. The bond market right now is... Well, major dislocation, a market tumult, I, no, a depression. I think, I think we're in the biggest bond market bubble in history. And it's being held up by fumes because the few people left believe the Fed will keep buying, keep propping everything up. But the minute they lose confidence that the central bank can print our way into permanent uh, then salvation... What? Then what? They will start selling the bond, and others will sell the bond, and there will be no bid, and there will be a crescendo well, Where will that down. money that siphons away from us go? It gets liquidated. This is all debt on debt. Nobody owns the bond. They borrowed 98 cents to buy it. And where so it's the, not as if the U.S. loses money interest and it goes to China or goes no, somewhere no, no. else. I mean, the this, is, this is a giant Ponzi scheme. It really is. It's just debt on debt on debt. Nobody really has any equity left in this system. So anymore. why don't we just do an Argentina and just declare bankruptcy like they did? Well, they I, I, you know, out. I don't think the largest economy in the world can easily declare bankruptcy or default on its sovereignty. Well, what do you think of so our defense to keep our AAA rating? The defense is, well, we can always print money. That's why we have a AAA rating. Well, if that were true, then I don't know why we've been working so hard all these years to save, to sweat, to build, to produce, to work. Uh, if it was so easy that you can just have a central bank, print enough money for everybody, drop it out of a helicopter, and tell people, pick it up once a day and party on. You know that isn't workable. You know that is uh, kind of uh, crazy economics. But effectively, that is where the Fed is taking us today. Do you and think, though, that the reaction you're getting from Republicans who are really pissed at you, Democrats who say you're just heartless and callous, and even your old Wall Street friends who say you're just you know, crying fire in a crowded theater. How do you feel about all that? Well, you know, uh, I, I sort of let the chips fall where they may, okay, because it's all part of the same syndrome. There are a lot of people who don't believe that this bubble on Wall Street today, we're at a point where we were 13 years ago, same point, dot-com crash, they reflated it under Greenspan, got there in 207, 208, crashed again. Now we're back to the same level, 1560. But a lot of people look at multiples in markets and things like yeah. that, David, and say it's actually pretty cheap. No, no, the, the market is dangerous. It's not so cheap. So where do you put your money? Uh, in the mattress or under it, uh, really? as the case may be. No, I think it is unsafe to be in these markets. All the risk markets are basically being inflated by the Fed. They're all trading on the Fed. They're not discounting future earnings, whatever they say about right. the multiple. If the, if the Fed put out a sign that said, gone fishing, for six weeks, there would be calamity in the markets because everybody who comes on daily to tell you buy, 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 why? Mainly because the Fed is, uh, you know, injecting the heroin, it's got your back, and as long as they're doing it, keep buying. The minute the Fed stops, the whole environment changes, the confidence changes, the psychology changes, and the bubble is revealed. This is the greatest bubble yet. 
All right, on that happy note, if you have a syringe at home, you can now stick it in your eye. Uh, I want to thank uh, David because, you know, he does make you think. Left or right, he makes you think. And because he takes both sides apart. Uh, the great deformation of the corruption of capitalism in America, it is a page turner and a heart turner at that. David, thank you very much. Thank you.